I'm going to spend the next uh, 10 or 12 minutes describing why steel is a sustainable choice for infrastructure projects, and, and just as importantly, why steel made here in the US uh, is a particularly sustainable choice. Uh, and as background, uh, it's worth noting that steel really is a, a vital material in many ways. Uh, it, it's uh, essential to our national security. It's essential to infrastructure. Uh, in addition, the industry supports uh, millions of good paying jobs. And as we will see, uh, American steel is the cleanest and most energy efficient option when compared to steel produced by the other larger, uh, largest steel producing countries. So uh, steel is vital to many aspects of our lives. I think if we look around, you can see steel pretty much everywhere, but it's especially important relative to technologies that are helping to reduce uh, carbon emissions. There are you know, obvious op uh, applications in water distribution, but also in uh, efficient transportation where uh, advanced high strength steel grades allow for lighter weight vehicles, for instance, without sacrificing occupant safety, including in electric vehicles where steel will continue to play uh, an important role. But steel is particularly critical to renewable energy projects, uh, especially large wind turbines where steel is a, is a primary component. I believe uh, at least one, uh, at least one source says that 70% of the weight of a typical large uh, wind turbine is, uh, is made from steel. And stainless steels are also uh, found in most solar and wind energy projects, as well as in transportation, water distribution, and really construction uh, in general. But we can't really begin to talk about the sustainability of steel with, without looking first at recycling. Even though it's a very uh, basic and seemingly low-tech concept, the, the level at which steel is recycled is, is truly impressive. And it's also important since every ton of steel that gets recycled into new steel conserves more than one ton of CO2 emissions. At its most basic level, steel is 100% recyclable. And when a steel beam reaches the end of its useful life, it can become another steel beam, or it can become a refrigerator or a car door or a roof panel. Somewhere between 60 and 80 million tons of steel are recycled every year in the US. It, it's an impressive quantity. And another way to, to look at it is the fact that uh, American steel mills recycle enough steel scrap to build, to build the equivalent of 25 Eiffel Towers every day of the year. It, it truly is a large quantity of, of recycling. It's also worth pointing out that steel is an ideal material uh, for the so-called uh, circular economy, partly because of its recycling characteristics but also because of its uh, inherent strength, durability, and flexibility in application. The, circu the circular economy, you may have heard that term, it's gaining a lot of attention as a replacement for the so-called produce, use, dispose uh, economical model. It's one where uh, recycling and reuse are stressed more. So uh, those are very briefly some of the advantages of steel as a sustainable material. Now I will try to describe why selecting steel produced here in the United States is a particularly sustainable choice. It begins with the concept shown on this graph, which is from an independent study published in 2019. The graph shows the average CO2 emissions intensity which is the CO, uh, CO2 emissions per ton of steel production in, in the listed countries. And at the time of the study, these were the seven largest steel producing countries in the world. 
as you can see, the emissions from the production of steel in the U.S. is by far the lowest. And uh, when compared to the highest, for instance, China, uh, U.S. production of steel has nearly 2.5 times uh, less or lower uh, CO2 emissions. It's, it's, it's really very uh, dramatic difference. You might wonder why uh, that's the case, why production in the U.S. results in uh, such lower CO2 emissions than in other parts of the world. Well, there are several reasons, uh, including a high percentage of EAF, electric arc furnace production, uh, and nearly exclusive use of iron pellets versus uh, something called sintered iron, which is a higher emissions product, uh, and greater use of natural gas as a fuel in the production process. This last factor is demonstrated in the, in the pie charts on this slide, which, which show the basic energy profile of the steel industry in the U.S. versus the same uh, profile on a global average basis. And you can see that the U.S. employs a far greater percentage of natural gas for steel making, 47% versus just 11% globally, and a much lower percentage of coal, 24% in the U.S. versus 64% globally, bo both of which contribute to uh, lower overall CO2 emissions for the steel produced here in the U.S. But while the production of steel in the U.S. is already uh, a low emissions process, uh, the U.S. industry continues to lower its profile by employing some of the strategies that you see here. Increased use of electricity from renewable sources, advancements in the use of iron in the form of uh, these pellets that I mentioned before, uh, sometimes referred to as direct reduced iron or hot briquetted iron, DRI and HBI, and longer term uh, looking at uh, technologies like the use of hydrogen as a fuel, as well as various carbon capture uh, technologies as well. And this slide just really shows examples of some of the things that I just mentioned. Uh, these are actually going on uh, in, the, in the US as, as we speak. So uh, transitioning to why steel should be used for bridges, uh, there are quite a few reasons, actually. Uh, steel can be a very economical choice, and of course, economic factors should be considered when looking at the overall sustainability of any material or product. Uh, steel bridges can compete on cost and even save cost when compared to nearly identical concrete structures. Some comparisons of steel versus concrete have shown up to a 25, uh, I'm sorry, 20% savings by using steel. We've already heard about uh, the sustainability of American-made steel. Excuse me. Not only is steel the most recycled material on the planet, but hot-rolled structural steel for steel beams, for instance, can contain over 90% recycled content. Uh, steel can also be reused, which is an important aspect after a long service life. One specific case in Ohio, a county saved $51,000 in superstructure costs by using repurposed beams that were removed from a previous steel bridge uh, taken out of service. Steel is also very durable. It has the potential to last for 100 years. And in fact, there are thousands of 100-year-old steel bridges still in service. Uh, steel can be accelerated in that prefabricated steel bridges can provide uh, a safe and cost-effective solution for accelerating bridge construction time. A steel bridge can be fabricated off-site in a controlled environment and then be ready to erect as soon as, soon as it reaches the uh, bridge site. And then finally, uh, steel is very innovative. Uh, it's often thought of as an old-school product, but advances in steel technology have really reduced the installed and life cycle cost of, of a bridge. Uh, innovations like the press break formed tub girder, which is what is pictured on this slide, can be installed in less than 30 minutes and last 100 years or more with minimum maintenance over their entire life. 
and uh, Dan already mentioned the uh, Eastman 140 design tool that's available from the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. So I'd now like to spend just a few minutes on the options available for extending the service life of steel bridges, since any extension of service life is directly correlated to uh, a bridge's life cycle sustainability. There are many methods. You can see some of them here. Uh, there isn't a single answer that always works. Instead, uh, each case should be looked at individually. I'll just briefly cover the use of weathering steel and a relatively new grade of steel. And then uh, I'll let John from the American Galvanizers Association provide more insight on the use of hot tip galvanize, which is an important method of corrosion protection. So weathering steel, you're probably familiar with. It's a relatively low cost and affordable option for corrosion protection. It works by controlling and limiting the corrosion process uh, as it forms a dense layer of rust on its surface called a patina, which doesn't flake off, thereby stopping the corrosion process. Uh, this dense layer is typically formed by the steel going through a, a, a cycle of wet and dry uh, periods. Weathering steel offers a lot of benefits, uh, one of which is a shorter fabrication time, which translates to a lower fabrication cost. That time is shortened because there's no need to apply an external corrosion protection system. Maintenance costs are also reduced for the same reason. There's no need to reapply any corrosion protection system. And if it's, the end result is a natural reddish brown appearance, which can blend into the surrounding environment easily. There are some limitations. Uh, it's not typically appropriate in coastal regions where mist or fog can keep the steel continually wet. Uh, weathering steel must be kept either dry or more typically it must go through these regular wet and dry cycles in order to perform properly. And then finally, a relatively new grade of corrosion resistant steel is this uh, ASTM grade A70950CR. Uh, it offers a very high level of corrosion protection. There is a proprietary version of this steel, which is designated DuraCore A1010, which is available from uh, one of our members, Cleveland Cliffs. And it's currently listed in the uh, A709 standard. This heat treated steel's chemistry includes chromium and nickel for superior corrosion protection, especially in difficult environments like coastal regions where weathering steel might not be suitable. It's actually uh, currently in use in bridges across five states and also in Canada. And with that, I will add my contact information. Feel free to contact me at any time with questions, 